um, I guess uh, about four or five months ago in early pre-release and uh, done some work with Microsoft in getting upgrades performed and one of the most important features is that the upgrades are smooth, clean, uh, been relatively easy uh, to deal with uh, which is sometimes unusual uh, in, in going through these kinds of technology upgrades. So uh, they're, they're certainly refining the process uh, a bit more uh, than they had in uh, previous releases. Um, the other thing we'll look at today um, is what are some of the additional features, et cetera, that are built into this particular uh, application set. So because uh, the number of people we have online today, we're kind of going in a in a voice-only mode at this point, but what I will do is uh, open up for any questions through the chat bubble, see if we can figure out how to uh, get the uh, voices open for some online questioning, if we can do it that way. Otherwise, we'll just deal with it offline uh, as a follow-up to, uh, to this phase of the presentation. So again, thanks a lot for attending, and uh, we'll forge ahead. It's just after 2.05, uh, so we'll get into the heart of this thing. Ultimately, if we can get the software to move ahead here. So one of the first things we want to look at uh, with respect to this presentation is uh, a bit of an agenda uh, for today's meeting. So the first thing we'll look at is what is the Dynamics GP 2010 product strategy. Uh, we'll get a sense of, of where they're headed as an organization and what, uh, what their vision is for the future. Uh, we'll then look at some of the top 10 features that are built into uh, GP 2010. Uh, we'll look at what's new uh, within the product, uh, some of the changes that have taken place within the licensing uh, model, and uh, different calls to action that we have in place uh, to help move this forward. We're going to be popping in and out of this uh, presentation because I thought what would be helpful for us is to give you a look at some of the applications in action uh, through a click-through presentation. Uh, so we'll be jumping in and out a little bit. So you'll bear with me as we do that. And, and basically, when we put the focus uh, on, on the application, Microsoft's role was to make sure that they're thinking about extending the reach. And they really defined it in three discrete pieces, what they called people, process, and ecosystem. So their goal is to focus on the role tailored design, some of which you may have had some exposure to in uh, earlier releases, version 9, version 10. Um, by process, they've made tremendous improvements in a lot of the functionality that's with, within the system um, and ease of use features. And by ecosystem, they're talking about the integration tools that are available, how you can better integrate your business environment with that of your vendors and that of your customers. Uh, so you'll notice that they've, they've really worked hard to extend the reach uh, through both the platform, technology, and the application itself. And looking forward, we'll look at what the roadmap is uh, for the future, the, the most recent past. Uh, many of you here are either on GP9 or GP10 or in some instance contemplating moving into uh, Dynamics GP. Um, and you know, what they did is they built into GP10 SP4 uh, the extended uh, functionality that the extender module brings into play here. And that gives you the capability to uh, design your own little micro applications, to add fields uh, to specific uh, screens and reports, uh, also makes them available throughout the database. Uh, they've also built in a better version of the CRM adapter. Some of us have had some questionable experience with the previous version of the adapter, uh, but they worked long and hard. They held back on this release, and we've been working with it for some time in-house, and we're pretty excited about it. In GP 2010, they went deeper into the functionality of the software. We'll look at some of that. They went heavy into role-tailored business intelligence, that is delivering richer content to users based upon their role within an organization. You've seen some of that early on with the home page, but it was, it was often fairly limited to just a couple of different metrics. Uh, this takes it to a, a new level. Uh, and speaking of new level, the office and workflow integration is uh, significantly deeper. And uh, they've changed some of the reporting tools that are in place, uh, de-emphasizing uh, crystal reports uh, and FRX, which many of you are using, and moving into something called management reporter. And where they're going in terms of the roadmap for the future is to try to make it an easier to implement, easier to use application. Uh, they're going to move towards what they consider to be contextual BI, uh, and that is, again, delivering predictive analysis. We'll be, we'll be looking at some of that today and, uh, and, and better integration tools to hopefully get better time to value. And uh, they've got a roadmap stretched out here through 2016, uh, so the product definitely has some longevity. Uh, they've got... Uh, 
plans uh, that we've seen as recently as uh, this past spring when we went down to Atlanta uh, that are stretching even beyond 2016 and where they're going to take the application and, and the whole dynamic suite in general. Uh, so a lot more CRM and a lot more reporting tools uh, is, is really where their focus is going to be. So as we move ahead through this process, uh, one of the first things we'll, we'll point out is some of the new business intelligence features. They've built in many different uh, pieces of code into the application. Uh, there are 20 new intelligence features. Uh, not many of us are using field service, so I won't dwell on that too much, uh, but 22 different word forms, and that's a pretty exciting shift in that uh, the integration through Microsoft Office Word and Excel is outstanding, even to the point of delivering business forms directly through the application. Uh, so no longer do we have to work with uh, crystal reports, or I know many of us have made investments in forms printer, uh, but going forward, uh, it puts the power more into your hands in working through uh, the Word forms integration. And I'm going to show you some uh, uh, deeper examples of that as we move into this. Additionally, they've built in many new charts and KPIs. They're making more extensive use of SQL reporting services. And uh, as I mentioned, there's a replacement to Crystal Reports. And these SRS reports are out of the box uh, so that we don't have to worry about uh, designing them, although very often we find that they're not 100% what everybody wants. Um, we still tweak them, but you, you end up with a, a better library as well as some new Excel-based reports and some back-end database views to even make it uh, possible for lay people to be able to connect uh, and, and be able to cull through their data without having to uh, toil through different reports. They've also integrated some additional web services. We'll look at some examples of that, not just in terms of data integration, but in terms of integrated messaging. Uh, we're going to run through a scenario whereby uh, you'll see how uh, IM uh, is going to have a big place within mid-market business applications. Uh, when I first heard about it, I thought it was kind of a bit of a novelty act, but uh, in looking at it in practical application, it's a, a pretty amazing feature to have uh, integrated into here. Uh, they've also built in some new financial features, so we'll take a deep dive into that. And all told, multiple workflows, uh, not too many people working with human resources and payroll. They've built in some additional distribution features. Uh, all told, there's about 300 and change some odd new features into GP 2010. By far their most ambitious release, uh, they took about three years, and uh, actually it was just a little short of that, about two and a half years in getting it to market. Um, so it is definitely power-packed. Uh, 